In this video, I'll show one possible way to turn a wooden sphere without an expensive sphere making jig. I've chosen to do the checkerboard pattern in this case, and this one is about four inches wide and about seven inches long. So the first step is to turn this into a cylinder. So I've got this turned into a cylinder now, and it is about 3.90 inches in diameter. So the first step is to mark the length of that sphere, which will be the same. And then the half diameter, let's see, that's 1.95. And just double check that. We'll go ahead and mark these circles. The next step on this is to mark out an octagon. And the length dimension that we're going to mark out now is the diameter times 0.414, which in our case is 1.62 inches. And half of that, which I'll mark off the center line, is 0.81 inches. And that will give us one face of the octagon. We also want to turn this hub end down to that same uh, first length dimension, 1.62 inch diameter across there, and that will give us the side face. And we'll do the same on this end too. We'll turn a channel, a groove down here, down to that same 1.62 inch diameter. So now that I have these hubs turned down to that 1.62 inch diameter, that gives us one side of the octagon, the second side, third side, fourth side, but then to cut the other sides, we need to cut a straight cut between this hub diameter and this outer line here, and this outer line and the hub diameter, just a straight cut right across there. The last dimensions that we need to mark, uh, the third length, is the diameter times 0 0.108, uh, which in our case 3.9 inches times 0 0.108 gives us the third length of 0 0.42 inches. So what we need to do is mark that distance back from each corner.
Now it's just a matter of cutting between this hub diameter and that line there, just a straight cut. A straight cut between this line here and that line there. Straight cut across that corner and a straight cut down here down to the hub. And that will give us a 16 sided polygon. You can see that's actually almost round right now. So all there is left to do is just kind of smooth off these corners. I like to do that by eye. Some people will actually uh, cut a circle template out of some masonite or hardboard, uh, rub a black crayon on the inside and then check for high spots on there. But it's almost just as easy to do it by eye. It's amazing what you can actually just pick up with your eye. So let's give that a shot. So you can see that actually ends up getting this pretty darn round. I've uh, still got the ends to clean up, of course, where I couldn't reach down in with the uh, skew chisel. But this gets us close enough to where we can sand this between cup centers now. So I'll just part the ends off, and I'll probably stay about an eighth of an inch away from the sphere, leave a little nub on each end there, and we can turn that off uh, between cup centers. Uh, just a couple of points I wanted to make here. Number one, you'll notice I left the center line on there. I've turned it 90 degrees, but I know because that was spinning and being turned that that's a perfect circle at that point. So what I want to do now is to turn these nubs off and just kiss the sphere all the way around until that line just starts to disappear. And that way I'll know I've got a perfect circle in this direction too. I'll mark another center line, rotate it at another 90 degrees, and then I, I'll do the same thing, cut that until that circle just goes away. The second comment I wanted to make is spend some time making some good cup centers. Uh, these are just uh, scrap pieces of wood with some O-ring. Uh, you can buy it at any automotive store, some uh, quarter inch O-ring or something like that, whatever you can get. Uh, but make sure that they run true. Spend some time making sure that those are accurate. The second thing is when you put your sphere in the cup centers, spend a minute just, don't assume it's centered, but check your run out and make sure that it's as centered on the axis as possible and that will actually help when you sand it to uh, keep it from being oblong when you sand it. 
Some other things you could use for cup centers. Uh, this is a foot off a disc sander that I bought the other day that I mounted to a bench. So you could use something like this for a cup center. Anything that just gives your sphere a little bit of support and a little bit of give. One thing I learned from my friend Aaron Ludwig is when you get this nub almost turned off, you're probably closer than you think. So stop turning there and just uh, hit it with a, a sanding, uh, padded sanding wheel here. After that, I'm going to turn the dust collector on and I'll sand this up through uh, from 120 grit up to about 600 grit. And then I'm going to put a CA finish on this one. Uh, you can take this on up and use uh, any kind of a finish that you like, uh, different polishes and things like that. I like the CA finish for this, so I'll sand up through about 600 first and then put the, about 10 to 12 coats of CA on it and then come back and sand that up through uh, my finest micro mesh grits and then polish that out. So that's sanded through 600 and actually looks pretty good right now, good enough for the CA finish. There's lots of videos on how to apply CA finish, so I'm not going to video that part of it, but uh, I will show this when it's done. But I just really like these uh, cool patterns that emerge if you're really careful with your getting your squares the same size uh, when you make the original blank. You can actually get some really cool symmetrical uh, patterns that emerge here and once the CA finish gets on there it's really going to look awesome I think so I'll show you that when we're done all right that's the finished sphere with about 10 coats of CA on it I got some cool patterns in there and hopefully that shows you that you don't need an expensive sphere jig to make something like this it's pretty cool looking of course, it's a lot easier with a sphere jig, but if you're cheap like me, this is almost as easy.